Your 3D printer is dumb. I'm sorry, but it's true. These incredible machines are actually quite basic in that they only follow the commands that we give them. They can't think for themselves, at least not for now. But what are these commands called and how can you use them to level up your 3D printing experience? Well, G-Code is one of the oldest programming languages around. In this video, I'm gonna talk about 10 G-Code commands that you really need to know to level up your 3D printing game. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. So as I mentioned, these machines can't think for themselves. They can only follow commands that we give them. And these days we use slices to convert our 3D geometry into commands that these machines can follow to reproduce our object. But what is G-code? What does it look like? And how do you understand it? Now here I have a G-code file to print out a cube that was sliced in Prusa Slicer. Now you send this file to the printer through the micro SD card and then the printer will follow these commands line by line to reproduce your object. If you're just looking at this for the first time, it may seem daunting and incredibly confusing, and I totally get it. I'm not very good at programming, but G-Code is actually fundamentally quite simple in that you just need to know what commands you're looking for, and then you can actually start to understand what's going on in this file. And as I mentioned previously, G-Code is actually one of the oldest programming languages around. It was created in the 1950s. But you might be thinking, well, Angus, 3D printers went around in the 1950s, well, that's right, because G-Code wasn't created for 3D printers specifically. It was created originally as a CNC programming language, which is computer numerical control. The coded numbers, which you see here, are fed into an electronic device, which we call an electronic director. The electronic director, in turn, generates electrical signals, which operate servo mechanisms, which in turn controls the uh, the machine tool. So with CNC, you can use computers to control machines. And this could be a CNC milling machine, a CNC lathe, a laser cutter, or a 3D printer. So you can see how G-Code slotted perfectly into the 3D printing ecosystem as it was being developed. Without G-Code, these machines won't do anything. They will just sit there idly. But if you give them commands that it recognizes, it will carry out those commands with the unit that the command dictates, and then move on to the next line, the next line, through the whole file to carry out the operation. So if that sounds pretty cool to you, you might be wondering, well, how do I send G-code commands to my 3D printer? I don't wanna just make custom G-code files and load them in like a 3D printing file that's too tedious. And it absolutely is, which is why we can tether 3D printers to our computer, or we can send G-code commands over wireless if you're lucky enough to have Octoprint or something like Clipper enabled. But in this video, we're gonna keep it basic. I'm gonna show you how to connect over serial to a 3D printer like this Ender 3 over the USB connection. So to do that, we need a bit of software called Repetia. This is Repetia. Now it's not the only software that can connect to a 3D printer over serial, but it's very old, very well established and free, so easy to get. And it works very well when controlling machines like the Sender 3. So to connect over serial, you need two things. You need the COM port, which is the port that it's connected to on the computer, so it can figure out what to connect to. And you need the board rate, which is the transfer speed between the control board and the computer. They need to be correct, otherwise it won't understand what to connect to. And to configure those, you go to config and printer settings. Now, figuring out the, the COM port is usually pretty easy unless you have lots of things connected over serial to your computer. Um, this is COM3, it's the only one that's popping up. And then board rate, figuring that out is a little bit more complicated because it's not usually advertised clearly anywhere. You can try searching your 3D printer make and then board rate on Google or something to find out what it is. But generally, if it's an Ender 3-ish machine, then you want to go with 115200. That's a good starting point. If that doesn't work, you can try either way above it or below it to see what connects. But this works fine for my Ender 3. I'm sure it's going to work fine for yours as well. Then you click apply, and then we're done with that. We can actually connect to the machine. It's connected up right now. It's not powered up. You notice that the screen's on, but it's actually not powered on. That's because it's getting 5 volt power from the computer's USB port to power the control board but obviously you're not gonna be able to 3D print with that. Now, I don't know if this is recommended. I usually have the power on while it's connected uh, just to make sure that it's not trying to drain power from the USB port. I don't think that's possible, but uh, for the purpose of the video, because the fans are very loud on this printer, I'm just gonna have it off for now. I'm just gonna connect and then you'll see as it connects, it'll do a few handshaky things down the bottom here and we are connected. So this machine is now connected and you can see it's connected because every second the 3D printer is actually feeding back to the computer over serial the state of the hot end and bed temperatures. Alrighty, so we can go over to manual control here and we can start typing our G-code. Now there is actually a wonderful interface here 
to control things directly, but you might not have that. So for the purpose of this video, we're talking about G code commands that I recommend you need to know. And number one by far is G28. Homing. When you initially turn on these 3D printers, they do not know where they are in space. The step motors that they use do not have the ability to remember their position. So what you need to do is home them to a zero position before you can do anything else. So this is what it looks like. You put in G28, hit enter, and then the machine will home itself to all axes. But let's just say you don't want to home all axes at once. Well, you can actually specifically home individual axes by simply adding the axis you want to home after G28. So for example, we can do G28 X zero. That will just home our X axis. Or if you want to add G28 Y zero, that'll home just Y or G28 uh, Z zero as well. G28 is at the basis of all movement when it comes to G code commands for your 3D printer. So that's why there's no place like G28. Next up, G1. Now G1 is your bog standard movement command. G1 is by far the most used command you'll come across when you look at a G code file for 3D printing. You can see that it's used so much in the file and that's because the machine is moving constantly and every time it moves from one point to another, it needs a G1 command. G1 is a linear move. So what that means is if you're starting at zero, because we homed, remember, zero, zero, zero on all axes, if you decide to send G1 X 100, it will move linearly to X 100. And from here, we could send G1 Y 100. And then finally, we could send G1 Z 100, and it'll move the gantry up 100 millimeters to be in that position. So we are now at 100, 100, 100 from the origin. But what if we entered them all at once? So that's home again, and then enter G1, X 100, Y 100, Z 100. So what you'll notice is it will linearly move to that new coordinate. That's why G1 is a linear movement. And this is handy because it's the shortest distance. It's like as the crow flies from one coordinate to another, but this can be an issue. Imagine you have a file on the build plate and you want to move above it, but it's gonna move from the bottom uh, homing point diagonally up to where, the, where it is above the file. It might collide, which is why you might have G1 X100 and then move across. And that's why often in start and end G code, you'll see G1 movements done in sequence to move the nozzle up out of the way so it doesn't collide with prints before it does anything else. And G1 is also really handy if your machine doesn't have a guided bed level routine. You can actually disable step motors and move it around manually. But if you wanna be really precise, you can home and then simply enter your movement commands using the G1 command to have powered movements so you know that that Z distance is never moving and you can get a perfect result every time. But of course you can also use the G1 command to move the extruder as well. So let's try that now. Let's go G1 E100. Oh, you look at that down there. Cold extrusion prevented. Now that's normally what you'd want because you don't want to try to force filament into an extruder that's not heated up because that's not going to work. But let's say you're diagnosing something or you're building a printer or you're trying to set your E steps. Well, it's dangerous to heat up an extruder when you don't really need to. So this next command is one that even if you're experienced with 3D printing, I'm always guarantee you haven't used, M302. The M command M302 allows you to enable or disable cold extrusion prevention. So to use it, you type in M302 and you set its state. So P0 is cold extrusion prevention on, which means it won't let you extrude till you heat up to a certain safe temperature. But M302 P1, will actually disable it, which means you can extrude at any temperature, even room temperature, it doesn't care anymore. And it's really good if you're doing some mods or playing around with your E-steps, and you don't wanna worry about heating up your extruder unnecessarily because that can be dangerous. Just make sure you turn it back on afterwards. Now, when I discussed G1, I mentioned that it's a linear movement between coordinates. What's really important is once you've homed your 3D printer, it's running in what's called absolute mode. So for example, if you move from zero to 100 in the Z direction, then you enter G1, Z100 again, it's not gonna move at all. It's not gonna move 100 up, not gonna move 100 down. It's gonna stay there. To move it again, you actually need to give it a whole new coordinate, like move it back down to Z0 or move it up to Z200. And by default, this applies to the extruder as well, which initially, I'll be honest, confused the heck out of me setting G code commands to it. And it catches a lot of people off. So when you send G1 E100, it'll move 100 millimeters of filament. But if you enter the same command again, it won't move. So of course there's commands to help us overcome that as well. And we have two options. Number one is to reset the extruded position 
so it thinks it's back at zero using G92. So let's say you've moved 100 millimeters of filament and you want to reset it again to zero, you just enter G92E0 and the machine will say, okay, we'll extrude it at zero again so you can do another G1E100 and we'll just continue on like that. Or the other option is to set your extruder to relative mode using the M command M83. By doing this, it no longer cares if it was at zero or not, it'll just move forward 100, then move forward another 100, back 100, doesn't care. This is how I see most 3D printers and slicers handle their extrusions, with the rest of the printer in absolute mode, but both approaches are valid. Knowing the command G92E0 is really handy if you wanna just manually send filament or figure out how to figure out your E-steps because it helps you reset back to zero without any faffing about. But let's just say you do wanna set a different steps per millimeter number for your extruder or XYZ axes. Well to do that, you would use M92. So this command lets you set the steps per millimeter. If you're running default millimeter units, you can configure for inches, but I don't really see people doing that. So the default is steps per millimeter and using the M92 command, you can set your new steps per millimeter and the machine will take that in and understand it. To perform an E-step calibration, you mark a reference point between the filament and extruder and then enter G1 E100 to extrude 100 millimeters of filament. You can then set your new steps per millimeter number by entering M92 E new steps and hitting enter. Once you're done, be sure to save to EEPROM with the M500 command or the changes won't be there next time you power up the 3D printer. Alternatively, in Repetia, you can actually change and save the settings by going to config, firmware EEPROM configuration and changing them here. So for example, here, the E steps are 93. Let's say I wanted to make it 100. That's not correct, but for the purpose of the video, whatever. And I say, okay. And you can see what that's done in the log here down the bottom that it saved all of the commands that were in that list to the 3D printer. And if I turn this 3D printer off and then back on, these are preserved. But let's just say you do need to heat up your 3D printer. Well, of course there are commands for that as well, but it's really important to note that there's two types of commands. One, your 3D printer will wait till it reaches a desired temperature before proceeding. And two, where it will just start heating to that temperature but keep going. Now it really depends when you'd want to use these. For example, in your start G code, if you want to start heating up your extruder because it takes a while to heat up before it starts doing the homing sequence and everything, then you'd use M104. It doesn't matter that it's going to take a while to heat up because by the time it is heated up, it's already gone through its movement and you start printing. So you save a little bit of time. But if you absolutely have to start at that temperature and the machine's not faffing about in the meantime, then you absolutely should use M109 where it'll wait till it hits that temperature, start printing. And again, this is really important for beds as well. So beds have their own versions of these commands, which is M140 and M190. So again, same idea, M140 will start heating to a temperature, but not wait. And M190 will wait till it hits that temperature. So for when you're printing stuff like AVS, you need that print bed to be at temperature before it starts that first layer. Otherwise it's probably gonna warp up and fail, in which case you need to make sure it will actually wait to hit that temperature which is why when you start G-code, you might wanna use that. Again, most slicers will do this sort of thing now, but it's really important to have this under your tool belt to diagnose things if you wanna figure out what's actually going on in your G-code and how you can change it to your liking using start and end G-code scripts. And now for the last of the um, useful G-code commands I wanna talk about is M303, which is PID tuning. So PID is essentially figuring out the best profile to run the hot end and bed heaters at to hit temperatures quickly and maintain them evenly without getting weird oscillations where it overshoots and then undershoots and it gets these weird oscillations in temperature, which can be really bad. PID tuning is trying to smooth that out and figure out the best values to get the, t the heating as, as accurately as possible. That's as far as I understand PID, but that's really as, as far as you need to understand it as well. So to use the command, all you have to do is just enter M303 and then let it run its course. It takes a little while to heat up and then slowly cool down and it will spit out the P, I and D values, which you can just enter into the EEPROM and then save it and then use them in future prints. And while that 3D printer is calibrating its PID values, let's talk about this video sponsor, Microcenter. Microcenter is your one-stop shop for all things tech and they have a huge range of products for makers. Microcenter has been sponsoring the channel for a very long time now and they sent across some of their rolls of inland PLA and this silk two-tone PLA is gorgeous. I printed this off on the end of three and it came out beautifully. I just love how it shifts, almost like a hologram in the light as you look at it. And they have a huge range of different colors to choose from. But the number one complaint I hear is that you guys don't have a micro center near you. Well, Micro Center is opening a brand new store in Indianapolis, Indiana 
on July the 20th, which is really exciting. With everything they have on offer, you could build an entire maker space with just one stop to Micro Center. And if you want to pick up an Ender 3 Pro for only 99 bucks, then there's a link to the coupon in the description below. But do keep in mind, it's for new customers in store only. Now back to the video. Let's finish up with two G-code commands that are just fun to use. They're not really practical in any way, but they're good to know. And we'll start with M300. M300 will make the 3D printer beep. Now you can actually change this. If you type M300 and then P, uh, let's say 100, it's a little bit. If you do M300 P10, it's a really short bip. And that little bit may be familiar to any of you who have a Prusa 3D printer, because that's how it's doing that sound. So this command is essentially just to turn the beeper on and off. There is also an S command, which can change its frequency, but it doesn't seem to do anything with the uh, Ender 3. So like, you know, S200, P100. It seems to be the same frequency. Might work on other 3D printers, but you can enter this into your G-code command if you want to make the 3D printer beep at you. For example, if you wanted to beep halfway through the print to remind you that it's still running, you can just enter it in and it'll do it, um, no problem. And then finally, one more command that's a lot of fun to use is M117. So M117 displays text on your LCD. And again, you can use this to set halfway through the print. You can say, okay, I'm halfway done, or hey, don't forget this. You know, you can put a shopping list in there. You can tell it to subscribe to your channel. And of course you can combine it with beeping or any other G code command, because again, these are used in combination to make a very, very powerful programming language that these 3D printers need to run. Again, they're dumb. They're really cool, but they're essentially computer controlled hot glue guns. They can't think for themselves and they need these commands to work. So that's why I reckon it's worth just having a little dive and getting to understand what some of these commands mean. And then if you're interested in fine tuning and troubleshooting your 3D printer, Connect it to Serial and have a play for yourself. And of course, let me know in the comments below which one you think is the most useful or if there's one that I've missed out that you think, oh, Angus, why didn't you, you didn't talk about that one. Please let me know in the comments below because of course, I'm always learning as well because here on Makers Me, it's my aim to empower creativity through technology. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye.